Greetings everyone. My name is Andrea Dickens and I'm going to talk to you today about how to add bee friendly features to your garden. First, I'd like to talk to you about bees and why they're important to us. There are many types of bees, perhaps the most familiar to us, honeybees, are just one type of bee out there. Other types of bees include ground nesting bees, which tend to live live in loose, small families near each other in the ground, and carpenter bees, which bore into wood in trees, decks, and so on. These semi-solitary bees, in particular, need human protection because the same problems that affect honeybees are hurting the solitary bees as well, but in much more alarming numbers, since they don't benefit from human protection as directly as managed honeybees and hives do. Why are bees so important? Well, over 40% of the food that we eat is directly pollinated by bees. Without bees, there would be no apples, no pears, no almonds, no orange juice, no tomatoes, no cucumbers, no squash, no pumpkins, and many more fruits, vegetables, and tree nuts would also disappear. So what can we do, especially living in urban and suburban environments? It turns out we can do a lot. Thinking of the bees when you plan your garden is probably the most important thing you can do, and helping the bees is very easy. So let's understand what the bees need from us. Bees need four things from their environment. They need water. They need pollen from flowers and trees. They need nectar from flowers. And they also need a sticky resin called propolis, which comes mostly from trees. Bees travel up to three miles to look for these things, so chances are a bee flies further for its food than you do when you go to the supermarket. This means your garden will help bees within a six mile radius of your yard. What sorts of things in your garden will help the bees? Well, first of all, large splotches of color um, with the same sort of flower. Bees have what's called flower fidelity. If they start gathering pollen from a snapdragon, they will continue to work the snapdragons until they're all done. Bees are more attracted to large patches of the same plant than they are to a single plant. Bees also like linear features in a landscape. Herbaceous borders are a good way to attract bees. Next, Plant your plants at different levels. This also helps to attract the bees. These borders all give a good tiered view to attract them. In, also in urban and suburban areas, it's common for beekeepers to have either rooftop beehives or to have seven foot fences near hives. Both encourage bees to fly above the height of humans, thus keeping humans safe from the bees. Flowers that are taller or Flower displays that have several levels tend to be more noticeable to bees than flowers that are just at um, ground level. Bees and other pollinators like butterflies love wide open and sunny spaces. Humans often like trees to provide a shady spot. Think about locating trees along the perimeter or around the north sides of buildings which are already partly shady. Next, reduce the ornamental grasses and replace them with long blooming flowers. The main reason that people plant ornamental grasses is that they retain the same color and shape over long stretches of the growing season. It's possible to replace these with flowering plants of the same duration. Next, think about the seasons. Bees need pollen and nectar from early spring to late fall. You probably also want a garden that looks vibrant throughout the full season. Plan your garden to bloom early as well as late. Early spring is especially important to bees because it's the time that they are starting to rear new brood, that means baby bees, for the spring and summer. Fall is important because bees store up their last food reserves in the fall before wintering over. If a colony does not have enough food reserves, it cannot survive the winter. And when food runs low in a colony, the bees share their food so equally that when they starve, all 30,000 bees in the colony will die within 24 hours of each other. Next, add a water feature. Even a bird bath will give the bees all the water that they need. Try to avoid using mulch. 
Mulch blocks access to the soil for the ground dwelling bees. This means that bees either have to burrow out in the open, as in this picture, where they're more in the way of humans, or it means that they have to find burrowing areas further away from your garden. Allowing the bees space under low-lying ground cover is ideal, so avoid using mulch in these areas. Next, don't be afraid to let wildflowers and so-called weeds flourish. Dandelions, coneflower, cornflower, daisies, honeysuckle, Queen Anne's, lace, Queen Anne's lace, clover, and many other wildflowers and so-called weeds all provide valuable sustenance to the bees. Often, the products that are used to kill these can also hurt other flowers, trees, and even grass that you do want to grow in your garden. Finally, think about what you're spraying. Although the insecticide you're spraying might attack Japanese beetles or gypsy moths or other garden pests, these chemicals affect other insects such as bees and butterflies. Last, build a garden that you'll enjoy and take care of and don't be afraid of the bees. They need our help and we need them. Thank you.